They're worth it all. They're worth it all. That's right. And yeah, I, I will always have animals. You know, the these people who lose their dog and they're like, oh, I can't ever get another one. It's like, yes, you can. You know, it's you love that dog and now you can show more love to another dog. You know, so I yeah. will always have dogs. Yeah, whenever I hit the lottery, I'm going to buy a huge piece of property with a bunch of trees and stuff like that. <clears throat> build some big walls so they can't get out and just let them roam free. Yes. I, I'd love to just adopt all the animals. Oh, there's so many of us that would do that. you know. When yeah. and, and, I, and I love how a lot of the shelters around the area, too, are making it so affordable now, too. Yes. Like a lot of times, uh, I see sometimes where they even do free events every once in a while. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's even little as five dollars and i think the uh pike county animal shelter i know for sure is doing like 20 and 25 mm -hmm. and i'll hear people spend these outrageous amounts of money on a dog and i'm still glad that that dog or cat is finding mm -hmm. a home but i'm like man for that much money you could buy out the entire shelter yes but uh, to each his own you know at least they're still getting a home well, but can't be too mad about that's it. That's another note I wrote to talk about was backyard breeders. You know, um, people who want a breed animal, I'm okay with that. And I actually don't hate all breeders because a good breeder will breed once a year. Will and it's hard to be a breed a good breeder because you have to look at the genetics of both of the dogs, notice if any uh, traits are coming through that they should not breed again. Um, but then that's not what we have here. We have the backyard breeders. And if you are buying an animal from someone and you're paying that much money and they will not let you come and look at where those mama dogs and papa dogs live, I guarantee they're in a crate. Their fur is so matted that they can barely move their legs. And all they do is push out puppies yeah. every couple of months. Um, and that, when you pay big money for that, like if they have to meet you at a gas station to deliver your puppy or something like that, they probably have horribly inhumane conditions, and you should mm -hmm. not be supporting that. Um, no, and, and it breaks my heart whenever you see those pictures, too. Like the uh, one house that was overran with cats. I think you posted a picture of it a few months ago that had them in the, the trash cans and yeah. stuff like that. Oh, yeah. and the dogs and cats there, too. And, yeah. um, you know, and, but shelters have breed dogs, you know, if you want a purebred dog, which mutts are healthier. You know, I love a mutt. All mine are mutts. Um, if you um, if you buy from a breeder, make sure you can see. Don't just go into the living room. Go back to where they keep the kennels. Check yeah. these animals out. The last dog I transported was a um, Labradoodle. Oh. And doodles are destroying. <laughs> yeah, they're huge, the, too. The yeah, they're that, huge. That's the, that's the big... Uh, curly-haired, afro-looking dogs. But they, dogs. they made everything with a poodle. You've got golden doodles, labradoodles. Yeah, I have a cousin that has golden blah, doodle. Blah, blah, doodles, you know. But it's just somebody who has a poodle and finds something to mix with it, and then they sell it for like $1,500. This this was a labradoodle bought from a breeder, um, a bit crazy, so they tied him up outside. I finally got him, took him to Tennessee to my golden rescue, and bless his heart, he had, um, and we've seen three of this in, in mixed dogs, a condition where your lower eyelids turn inward, so every time you blink, your uh, rough fur scratches the cornea. Mm. So he was in pain, which was one reason he was crazy. He was a poorly bred doodle. His fur even looked like, the, the vet said, the earlier versions of the, the doodles that came out of me because it looked like a bad perm. It was like yeah. really rough but not really curly. So he had a lot of strikes against him, but they they had surgery on him. They're going to have to do surgery again because they said sometimes it still flips back no matter what they do. Mm. Um, so he's going to get another surgery. Uh, he's working with a behavior specialist to try to <laughs> learn some manners. So dogs have anger management. Oh, they, 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 yes, they have. They have behavior specialists that just work with dogs and wow. teach them not to counter surf, teach them not to you know be so crazy. But my heart breaks because. There's other doodles out there that's got that same condition that they're in pain, their eyes are hurting all the time, and constant tears and stuff, and nobody's getting vet help for them. You know, somebody mm. just bought a doodle because they wanted it, and then it got all crazy, so they either set them out or put them outside and never offer them any help. Yeah. So you've got there's a lot of genetic conditions that are specific, like Goldens get cancer a lot, you know, um, and you've got to check into that and do look at 
the animals that are born from those animals and do they have these conditions and we've had a couple of golden puppies that were born with uh, misshapen paws you know half a leg Mm -hmm. just from irresponsible breeders and there, there's so many, especially around here. Oh, it's I've, huge I've around here. It's huge around and, here. And, and, and I get that it's a big money racket and stuff like that. But I think that, uh, you know, as information like this comes out, people will start realizing it a little bit more. I yes. at least hope so. Yes. I mean, the shelters, usually they would, they know the background of the dog or at least can tell you a little bit about it. I mean, it's not like you're getting just a dog with a question mark on its head they'll let you know because that's that's one argument that i hear a lot about people who's like oh the breeder they know the dog or whatever the breeders will lie about the dog yes they will and a lot of these shelters around the area that is their job like they get shut down if they don't do the necessary things that they have to do some of these breeders just won't care and like you said we'll meet you at double quick yes And, and hand you this beautiful little puppy that ends up being a horrible little puppy as it grows. Now, um, oops, sorry. Oh, you're fine. Uh, Jackie Brown at our Floyd County shelter. I have to say that woman can tell you anything about any of those animals. She knows them just like you would know your best friend. Um, mm. I contacted her one time about um, somebody was looking for a barn cat, but they wanted a friendly barn cat that could play with the kids and stuff like that instead of a feral cat. And she had the perfect cat. She had a cat that, for some reason, would not use a litter box. You know, well, that's perfect for outdoors, you know, because there's no litter box. But it just could, it would not use the litter box, but it was friendly. It loved loving. And she's like, well, I know it can't be indoors since it won't have a litter box. But she knew its behavior. She knew its characteristics when she was able to match it to the perfect owner. Oh, that's awesome. So your pet stores don't know that. You're, you know, but. When you have a good shelter with a good uh, person like Jackie working there, she can tell you, you know, well, you don't want this one because it's big and it likes to jump. Or, you know, you do want this one because it's an older dog and it likes to sleep all the time. And if it's somebody's looking for something for their grandma or something, you know, that would be a perfect one that they could just walk in the evenings and come home and it would be calm. So uh, shelters are great places to check out as breed specific rescues are, too. You know, there's Adopt-A-Golden in uh, Knoxville that I work with. There's a lot of breed specific. You can Google, you know, uh, boxer rescues, golden rescues, and and get your animal from there because they Mm. send them to a foster parent to work with to learn its quirks. Is it good with cats? Is it good with kids? And then they'll match you up with the perfect animal. Yeah, the the animal shelters around here do a fantastic job. There's a lot of them that are no kill, and I love that about them. But, you know, that also creates problems like how we were talking about with them being overran. So if you really love animals and you want to make a difference whenever it comes to the animal community in the area, whenever you're looking next time, check out your shelters. And if you can't adopt at this time, go help at a shelter. Yeah, you can. All Well, I... I see a lot of people around the area volunteering, and I love that. But even if you don't have the time to volunteer, uh, what me and my wife do, we donate items. Yes. You can also do that. They need as much as they can get. Oh, you know, it's always food, uh, any kind of blankets yeah, or blankets sheets, because one. they do a ton of laundry. But then when you have a litter of parvo pups, you just can't wash that blanket and use it again. That has to be tossed. Yeah. You know, so they always can use blankets and they can always, you know, if you've got a, a comforter you don't use anymore, that would be great for a mama and her puppies. You know, so towels, anything like that when you're cleaning out your linen closets and they don't care it has a hole in it. They don't care if it's got a stain on it as long as it's been washed. Take it in and, and donate that because there's always something. And then sometimes just cash because they've got utilities to pay you exactly. know, and, st- and special vetting stuff. So it, there's always a way to contribute. There's always a way.